Good morning. I'm here on the Farmington River in Connecticut and I'm going out electrofishing for research with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Can't wait to share it with you. Welcome aboard the electro fishing boat. Today I'm excited to learn about how Ken Sprankle and his research team gather information about migratory fish in the Connecticut River and its tributaries. The fish we're looking for today are two types of herring called the blueback and the alewife. And blueback herring and alewife are collectively referred to as river herring. Unfortunately, for the river herring, what we've seen over a period of time is a, a dramatic decrease in their abundance up and down the Atlantic coast, but again, we're talking about the Connecticut River here. So that's why this team is out here sampling tributaries like this one throughout the spring migration season. The fish are usually not too hard to find in the Farmington River, but it's been raining for a week now, and the river is really high. The YSI, if you drop that about half a meter in the water, it'll collect our temperature data, water conductivity, and dissolved oxygen. And this is a Secchi disk. It measures uh, water visibility. Now we're finally ready for the main event. The electro fishing boat is going to produce a current that runs right through the water to stun any fish swimming close to the boat. That makes them easy to scoop up with a net. But we're only after herring today, so we'll cut the current and move the boat away from any other fish to allow them to recover and swim off. You'll learn more about how the boat works later in this video, but in the meantime, you never want to touch the hull of the boat while the system is turned on. I want to have at least five timed runs done. And times are uh, the amount of time that power is being applied to the water, which is 500 seconds. And we apply that power in intervals so that fish don't sense that electrical field and move out of the way. So uh, the, the guys are going to be up there um, sporadically applying power, collecting the river herring. We'll keep count and track of the other species we're seeing, and uh, we'll stop and process those fish for a bunch of data you'll see in a moment, and we, and we do that after each run. As we, as we work our way down river, going with the current, um, sampling for those two species. Fifteen seconds. Can you yeah, get the little right get the little green handled net? Yeah, so for our work we do a, a total length and a fork length measurement. We do weights. Um, and then in the laboratory we're gonna be Extracting the otoliths so we can determine age structure, learn more about that, and then the scales we look at to determine whether or not the fish has spawned before. So this is a low, low sample size. You know, we just did 500 seconds. We got three fish, so it, it was a really low catch rate for early May. And uh, we'll see what the rest of the day brings. But these fish are all going to be bagged. Typically, I bag 15 to 20 fish would be a target from each run to get up to an 80 fish total. That's an owlwife, actually, so... 
So L wife and length is that's 276. Fork is 241. And then we determine the sex by do, just applying a little bit of pressure to the abdomen. You can see a little bit of milk come up, so that's a male. Weight is 165. Blue back. 295. Forks 255. Sex is male. Alewife. wife. 270235. It's a male. You can really see the milk coming out of that. Typically, those ones that are smaller would could be an age two or three male. Uh, those largest of fish are typically a large female that may be eight, nine years old. The oldest fish we've aged is an age 10 fish. Ideally, the, the age structure for these populations would contain older age that's, fish. That's, how we do that's one of the concerns we have from a management standpoint the is the loss, uh, the contraction of the age structure to younger age groups and with that comes less repeat spawning. I mean they come into the river spawn once and we don't see them so much anymore. The repeat spawning component typically 25 or 30 percent of our run. Oh, oh, damn it. They're right there. Can you, can you get can you get us closer? Bo? Yeah, watch that in. Oh, damn. That's a walleye. Yeah, can you get us over there? Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Yeah. On your left hand. <laughs> They're straight in the trees. Jeez. Yeah, that, was, <laughs> that, was, that was tough. Go, 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 go. Good catch. First bag is bag four. Yes, it is. Blue back, unless I say otherwise. Okay. Two five five, two two five, male. One four five. Blue back. So two eight five, two four nine, female. Running. Two, two, four. Two, two, three. Move back two, eight, three. Four A, male. Two ten. Two eight zero. Two four three, male. Zero two. It's a little bigger fish, so this this would be an older. It's a female here. It's a three oh three. Fork length is a two six five. It's a big gravid female. You can see she's just full of eggs. So it's a big female. Being that size, it's probably you know it's probably a six six seven year old fish maybe. Two eight five. Move back total. Two eight three. Four two four seven. Male. Two, two, 
sides, bitch. Yeah. Two twelve in the back ten. Bags are already labeled. Yeah, ah. it's so soon in the car. Other species? Say six straight bass, one walleye. Six a walleye? Yeah, I said a walleye. That's awesome. Uh, five white suckers. I only saw a couple shad. Yeah, say like two. Three. Yeah, two or three shad. So, as I was saying, you know, again, with the 500, 500 you seconds, a couple bites back from there into that one. seven fish, it's a little under a, a fish per minute. Quite low for this time of year, but we've got high water conditions, cool water temperatures, so maybe that peak will come later. Um, in past years, at some of our higher levels of abundance, including at this river, um, I've had to cut sampling short. That 500 seconds, I'll suspend that once we get 60 fish in this live well, and that can happen after only 100 seconds of time. Those those are the catch rates where you know fish per minute is in the neighborhood of you know 80. Fish per minute. Low catch rates, a little disappointing, but you know we'll see how the rest of the season progresses. This is the uh, the pulsator system that takes an 8,000 watt generator under us here that provides power to the pulsator. You can see we've got settings here for voltage, duty cycle, frequency or hertz, and then also the output form, which we can use so alternating current, direct current, or pulse direct current. We use pulse DC. We took that conductivity measure earlier in the morning. That's the basis for our voltage setting. And once we start to apply power, we'll get output readings. And I like to have uh, around 19 to 20 amps of uh, average peak amps on this output screen. That works well for us, stunning the fish, able to net them and the fish that we want to let go, that they're able to swim free and be unharmed. It also, of course, keeps track of time, that 500 seconds that I've been mentioning. Um, that's that's recorded. So that's the, the system. We've got the lat long with this new boat. It actually records all of our GPS positioning anytime power is applied. So we can download that on the computer. So that's a nice upgrade from our boat that was 30 years old. We use direct current. Uh, the booms have the anodes. The boat hull itself is the cathode, and the power's going between the two. The boat hull, of course, has a really large surface area. So the voltage gradient that emanates out from the boat is less of a shock to the fish. Most of the power's out where those cables are going in the water. So. It's the boat hole versus just those cables you've seen in the water and the voltage gradients that emanate out from those cables, that's what's stunning the fish. Most of the power is associated with those cables and you know they're out of course in the front of the boat with our long handled handle dip nets where we can get the fish. Sample. So when I touch the pedal, that'll turn the generator on. It sends electricity out to the anodes and it puts it in the water through these metal uh, wire and then that electricity will try to ground itself and it'll do that by flowing towards the hull of the boat and um, the fish will get attracted to it their their muscles will kind of lead them towards the electricity and when they hit the like proper field they'll just seize up and kind of float to the surface and what makes you decide when to hit the pedal and when not to so uh, when we're just looking for a, a school of fish uh, we only want to sample intermittently, like press the button intermittently. And that way we don't have a constant field that fish can sense. Because if they do sense a field, then they're going to sense a little bit of distress and they'll swim away. So um, we'll put on the field for five se seconds and that'll tell us if we're on any fish. And then we'll go off to try to move away from where we just had that last electricity discharge. In that sense, we can kind of keep ahead of the fish in terms of having them not sense when we're coming. And usually I try to time it so that we get about a boat's length away from where we last shocked because that's about how far the electricity will go um, at its maximum reach. 
We spent several hours on the water that day, and it was pretty hard work for a total catch of 11 river herring. These specimens were put on ice and brought back to the lab. And if you're curious about what their bodies and their tiny little ear bones can tell us about their age and reproductive biology, be sure to join us for the lab tour in an upcoming episode.